Welcome back to the Black Carnivore Podcast. Today, I am really excited to introduce Cynthia. I She's been a longtime member of the Black Carnivore community, but I got to meet her for the first time face-to-face at KetoCon earlier this summer, and, uh, and I found her story to be just fascinating, and I'm really excited to share it with you today. So Cynthia, why don't you tell us about your, your you know, keto carnivore health journey background? Um, tell us how you got here, where you started, and how you got here. So I, I, I am uh, 53. I am single and I live in uh, Delaware. I'm originally from a small town in Pennsylvania, but I've been in Delaware for about 13 years and it's a nice quiet area. So I like it. What brought me to keto actually is that I have been uh, either chubby or overweight, you know, since I was very young and um, I was always bigger than most of my friends. Um, and I remember that my mom was always trying to lose weight as I was growing up. So I kind of grew up in a somewhat of a diet culture. Um, you know, as a kid, obviously I didn't necessarily feel like I needed to lose weight, but then you get to school and your friends look a certain way and you look another way. And so by the time I was in my teens, I I was, I was dieting myself. Um, So I remember in my mom's later years, she was a lifetime member of Weight Watchers. And uh, so we always had the uh, processed shakes and snacks and the meals in the house. And I tried it a few times, but uh, I found pretty early on in my teen years that uh, low calorie was not something that I liked at all. (laughs) So... Um, when I graduated from college in the early uh, 90s, I had gained way more than the freshman 15. It was probably more like 20 or 30 plus, you know, by that time. And that was just, you know, fast food, the pizza places, you know, parties, drinking, you know, it just all piled on. And so after college, once I started being out on my own, that's when I started, you know, trying to find ways for me to lose weight, similar to how my mom had when she was in her, you know, early 20s and 30s. Um, so when my mom was in her 30s, she was diagnosed with kidney disease. And that's uh, when she began dialysis treatments. And I remember I, I asked her at one point, if she had, you know, any other things like diabetes. And she said that she was never diagnosed with diabetes and I never saw her, um, you know, test her blood sugar or any of that. So I don't know if she had undiagnosed diabetes and, you know, that led into the kidney disease or if she had, you know, developed kidney disease for some other reason, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I have, I have no idea, but, um, she was on dialysis until she passed in 1999 at the age of 52 from complications of kidney disease. So after my mom passed, I uh, initially lost weight um, due to grief. I'd say probably two or three weeks. And the strange thing was the, I had gotten down to like around 170. And I think that might have been around my lowest as an adult. And I was basically eating low carb and OMAD because I had, at that time, I had no appetite. I would only eat once a day. And it was like a, 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 it was like a fish, fish and broccoli or fish and Brussels sprouts. So yeah. Okay. (laughs) It was weird, but it was the only thing I was, you know, uh, up to eating at that time. So I think I did that for two or three weeks. And then like, as as I got back into life, I think the grief kind of switched and I kind of did a 180 and I just ate my feelings for years. And it was a lot of fast food, a lot of sweets and things like that. So it was um, many, many years of doing that. And then sprinkled throughout that time, I would try to lose weight. So, you know, I would basically eat whatever I wanted. And then at some point, usually in January, around the new year, <laughs> I, I would say, okay, it's time to get back, you know, get, get your life back together. 
lose this weight and I would try and then I would do okay for a little while and then I'd go back to my old ways. So uh, interestingly, during one of the times that I was doing low carb to try to lose the weight, it was either in the late 90s or the early 2000s, I came across a forum or a message board called Zeroing, Zeroing on Health. And it was full of people posting stories about only eating meat. And I mean, I was fascinated. I would read it because I, I would always research a bunch of uh, low carb stuff, low carb recipes and things like that. So that's how I got onto the message boards and forums. So, I was so wait, I'm sorry, that message board, was that the one by Charles Washington? Yes, yes. And so when were you on it? I wasn't a member, mind you. I was just reading about the other, <laughs> I was reading the other members' things. But it was, it was, it had to be at least the early 2000s. I'm not sure if it was the late 90s, but definitely the early 2000s is wow. when, I, when I first came across the message board or the, mm-hmm. yeah, that, you know, that was back before. I'm, I'm, I'm not even sure. I guess MySpace was around that time, but that was before Facebook, you know, and all that stuff. So, yeah. And like I said, it was fascinating, but I still had the mindset of, oh, we need vegetables. We need the vitamins and minerals. And, you know, Mm -hmm. even though I was reading about people's, you know, um, successes and reading about how they've been eating that way for years and they were doing great, I still had the, you know, the mentality that, oh, well, if we didn't need the nutrients, why, you know, why would we be told that? So, <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I, I still kind of not, not to be judgmental, but in my head, I was like, oh, that's nuts. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I didn't, I didn't even try it. I did, I did low carb, but I didn't even try carnivore or, or zero carb at that time. Um, you and I are of one mind because I was the same way. I spent like six months reading through those messages back in, I think this was like the, the uh, late aughts, you know, 2007, eight or nine. And I read and I was just like, this is crazy. I, you know, I can't do this, but it was intriguing. It was definitely intriguing. Yes. Yes. And that's, that's exactly how I was too. So fast forward to 2013 and my brother got married and I was, you know, um, a small part of the wedding um, and shopping for a even closely flattering dress was very difficult. Like I found something, but I, I still look at the pictures and I'm like, Ugh. But, uh, after the wedding, when the photos came out and, you know, you saw, you know, you saw the photos and you're just out there. <laughs> I was like, um, okay, that's not good. But even after that, I was still kind of in a place where I wasn't really sure how to get so much weight off. Cause I mean, I really needed to lose quite a bit of weight and I was so still so addicted to carbs and sweets. Um, so over the next few years, I went back to low carb, tried to stick with it. Um, One thing I liked about low carb was that I was never hungry. So um, I used to search for recipes and diet information online um, to try to keep myself motivated. Eventually, that's how I came across keto. And then, you know, looking at it, I was like, oh, this is so much like low carb, except for, you know, and then except for the fact that it's higher fat, moderate, usually moderate protein. And Um, so I decided to give that a try to see, you know, I did some research and I realized it was definitely uh, cleaner, cleaner than low carb, definitely cleaner than low carb. So I started the keto diet around 2016 and I lost, I lost weight pretty quickly. Um, I always loved fatty meat and there are some low carb veggies that I do like. So keto is pretty easy. Uh, again, I was reading stuff online and I realized there were a ton of low carb recipes uh, and I could make keto substitutions. So that became a pretty slippery slope because uh, I was making muffins with um, vital wheat gluten 
And I love those muffins, let me tell you. And it, it, was, it was several years before I realized, oh, wait, vital right wheat gluten is just wheat. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, they were they were supposedly a keto uh, recipe, but I guess it wasn't uh, something that I that clicked right away. Mm -hmm. um, eventually, it did. Eventually, it did. So um, I I was still at the end of my, or I should say, not at the end of my keto journey, but before I started carnivore, I was still making some. Uh, a lot, not a lot, but some treats. So let's go with mug cakes. I was still making yeah. <laughs> mug cakes. I don't know how you do that keto. <laughs> well, I mean, it was what was it? It was. Um, well, I always figured like if the the you know the smaller the bite, the more keto it is, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if you're not having that much, it's you're it's below um, below the carb number. Exactly, exactly. And um, oh, the mason jar ice cream. I had gotten into that quite a, quite a, quite a bit um, right before I decided to try carnivore. So um, it was in uh, early 2016 was when I was at my highest was which was around 316. And um, when I started keto, I started losing pretty pretty uh, steadily. And then somewhere around the beginning of 2018, I started incorporating fasting. So I, 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 you know, obviously with keto, you don't eat like you do with the standard American diet. So I think I was eating three times, probably three times a day, just because that's what you are used to. But I was um, obviously incorporating this, the keto treats as well. And then um, when I started incorporating fasting, I was trying to, you know, get the, the last of the weight off. And also I read a lot about autophagy and, you know, the health benefits of that. So I started out, you know, just extending, you know, my, my, um, not eating breakfast. So extending my overnight fast and then I would try fasting for 24 and then 48 and then 72. So my longest fast, my longest fast was 10 days. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Why? I just, it was the autophagy. I just wanted, and I wanted to try and see, I wanted to see how I felt. And after day five, I was miserable. I was miserable. Uh Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> I was miserable. Or no, I'm sorry. It wasn't 10 days. It was seven. It was seven because yeah. Okay. After day, yeah. After day five, I could only do a couple more days. So yeah, seven was, seven was my, my longest fast, but five I felt was my sweet spot. And I think I did five days, maybe twice ever. Mm -hmm. um, did you notice any big changes after going seven days? No, no. Okay. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I didn't know. <laughs> so I, anybody yeah. watching this who's like, "Wow, she went seven days. Maybe I should do that." And you're saying, "No, I could have done seven days of not fasting and been in the same place." I I mean, I felt it, when I did the five day because I had done a five day before I tried the seven day. When I did the five day, I felt really good when I broke my fast. I mean, I didn't notice anything in particular or specific but I did feel good. Um, and yeah, there were, there were periods up to that, up to the fifth day where I didn't feel as good, but by that fifth day, I felt really good. But for, for the seven, for the seven days, that sixth and seventh day were, were, they didn't do anything for me. Okay. So, you know, but that was, you know, that was back in the, uh, right before the pandemic when I was fasting more so at that time. Um, so let's see, uh, I lost most of my weight with keto and fasting because I did, I did lose when I fasted as well. You know, it, it wasn't like you, you lose all of the weight you lose when you fast, you know, it, some of it does come back, but I did lose, you know, steadily with the combination of keto and fasting. Um, but I was still, you know, around, I was bouncing around to 200, 205 
for quite a while. And everything I tried, you know, I couldn't seem to figure out how to get the, the last of the weight off. So that's when I started doing some more research and I came across carnivore, you know, YouTube videos and, you know. So when you first came across a video, were you like, hey, wasn't there, wasn't there this group I used to listen to? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, it definitely, yeah, it definitely clicked that zero, zero carb was mm -hmm. what they used to call what is mm -hmm. now considered carnivore. Mm -hmm. Did you go back and try to find that group again? Honestly, I am, I don't think so. I don't think so. Only because I didn't think that message boards were around anymore. And it never occurred to me, even though I know zeroing on health is on Facebook now, but at the time it never even occurred to me to look for them. Mm. Yeah. You know, when I, mm -hmm. when I, first, when I first started, but then as I did more research and, you know, came across more groups and things like that, I came across that particular Facebook group as well. So, mm -hmm. yeah. um, so once I started seeing things like that, what well, I didn't even know about the, um, what is, what is it? The, is it, what is January? Is it the carnivore 30 day challenge? That's usually. The oh day? yeah. I know what you're talking about. Uh -huh. yeah. So I didn't even know about that, but I am the person, and not necessarily a, a New Year's resolution, but I am that person who January, you know, I'm usually trying to start something as far as weight loss or health or something like that. So, of course, uh, January of 2020, I decided to give Carnivore a 30-day try just to see if it would help me jumpstart my weight loss and, you know, so that was January of 2020, you say? Yes, January 5th. It was oh. that Sunday was January 5th of 2020 is when I decided to give it a try. Okay, so let's hear it. How was it? <laughs> so when now I don't think I had, except for weight loss, I don't think I had any other expectations. But I did notice within the first couple of weeks that my overall mood improved. Um, I didn't get as annoyed as quickly or as often. Um, and then I'd say over the, the, definitely over the 30 days, I noticed that all, all of the aches and pains, you know, you know, you might sleep and you wake up with your shoulder hurting or your neck hurting. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't have any of that. I had almost no aches and pains whatsoever within that first 30 days. And my energy was really good. So by the end of January, I said, you know what? I kind of like this. Maybe I'll try it for 75 days. I had come across, in my research, I had come across um, uh, carnivore. 75, yeah. Carnivore. Yeah, I, I didn't actually do all the other stuff of that challenge. I just, <laughs> I just continued carnivore for, you know, for longer to see how I, how I felt. Um, and so I realized that um, by the end of the first quarter, so that was, you know, 90 days, because at 75, I just continued. I just loved the way I felt on carnivore and I, could, I felt I could make it, I could make it a lifestyle. Um, but it did take quite a while for me to notice that cravings were no longer an issue. Um, especially for me, I was a big sweets person. So if I was, if I was going to, uh, binge on something, it was going to be ice cream or cookies or something, something to that effect. Uh, so ice cream and cookies and <laughs> sometimes, <M -Ms>. right. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, exactly. So yeah, I, uh, noticed I'd say about four between four and five months was when I noticed that I no longer had actual cravings. Yeah, every once in a while I'd see a commercial or something and I'd be like, oh, yeah, that looks good. But it wasn't a craving. Like it wasn't mm -hmm. something where I'm like, I really, really, really want this. It was just like, oh yeah, I remember. I, I you know, that looks good. And it was just a passing thought. So I really, I, I really liked the fact that the cravings had gone away, gone away at that point. Um, let's see. And then I no longer had any bloating or, you know, 
very, very minimal, if any gas. Um, I, sometimes I had indigestion when I was eating keto and the indigestion had disappeared. Um, my, I, my dental cleanings were less painful and, you know, less uncomfortable, which I, I, I used to always ask them, you know, cause they, they will, they would sometimes give me no Novocaine but a lot of times Novocaine just for a tooth cleaning. Sometimes it depends. It depends. Wow. It, it was a deep one. Cause I did have some pockets back then. I had, I had some areas that needed deep, deep cleaning. So if it was a deep one, sometimes they would give me Novocaine, Novocaine, but sometimes it was just that numbing gel. And, um, I'd say over the last year and a half, maybe two years, maybe two years. Yeah. I've, I haven't had anything for my cleanings. They just, wow. I, haven't, I, I mean, sometimes they get a little handsy, but most of the time they're pretty, pretty pain-free. So that has definitely helped, helped me. And then, um, I also noticed that I have a couple, I, I have a couple of skin conditions that usually flare up in the summer, um, when it's humid. So that first summer of 2020, I realized that neither of them had occurred. And so um, the one condition is a um, very pretty mild case of hydrogenitis suppurativa. And I usually get uh, some painful weeks in the summer. Um, basically uh, for me, I say it's a mild case because I would get um, these uh, abscesses, but I would get them under my arms. So some people get them in other areas, um, but most of mine were located under my arms, you know, near the lymph, lymph, lymph area. Um, but so is that like a, uh, wait, when you say an abscess, does that mean like an open wound or? Yeah, they, they're, they're, uh, the, they're somewhat like boils, but the, they, I don't want to get too too gross with it, but yeah, they 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 eventually kind of uh, drain, and yes, I would sometimes have wounds, and they would you know be open because they're you know you just have to clean them out and wait for them to heal on their own. Wow, so that sounds painful and potentially <laughs> dangerous. Like you could get an infection, especially well, if it's under your arm. Well, tech, I mean, I, th I, I mean, yes and no, because I, I feel like technically the, the abscess itself is sort of. Oh, it is the infection. Yes, I think that's so, right. Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> wow. Exactly. But yes, it's very painful. And like I said, mine is mild. I've seen things um, online and on TV uh, where some people just have them in, you know, huge areas on other parts of their body and I I mine was very mild but it it was it was very painful and since I started carnivore I have have not had an outbreak and I used to get wow. them at least once a summer at least once a summer so that was really great and then I also used to have polymorphous light eruption, which I was told was, a, was called sun poisoning. Basically, if I was out in the sun for more than 20 or 30 minutes in direct sunlight, I would break out in a very itchy rash. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So you were allergic to the sun like a vampire. <laughs> 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 exactly so I actually was diagnosed with that when I was like eight or nine and wow. every every summer I would have to be cognizant of how much time I spent in direct sunlight so I mean I could be outside but I just had to have a source of shade if you know or I, I would be miserable. I remember most of the time it was limited to the backs of my hands and my arms. Um, but one, one year I got crazy and I spent way too much time in direct sunlight and my face broke out. And oh, it was, it was the worst thing that had ever happened. <laughs> I, I never did that again. So I would always make sure to not be in direct sunlight any more than 20, 30 minutes max. This is from the time I was like eight years old 
until I was 51. Yeah. Um, but the summer after I started uh, eating carnivore, I had gone out on my patio and I was working out there because we were in the heart of the pandemic. So I was working out on my patio and I realized I had been outside for 45 minutes. And I was like, oh, yeah, so I better get ready for, you know, get ready for the, uh, the rash. And I'd say two days later, I was like, hmm, there's, there's no rash. <laughs> there's no rash I'm not itching so I decided to start testing it so every weekend I would try to stay out a little bit longer and then one one day I went to uh the beach and I was like you know what I'm gonna I, I take an umbrella with me I took an umbrella with me but I was like I'm gonna test it and see how I do if I'm out for hours at a time. So I tested it for, I was four hours, direct sunlight, early morning, but direct sunlight on the beach and no out, no outbreak. No, no. Wow. Outbreak. Congratulations. Thank That's you. Huge. <laughs> Thank you. So that would, those, those so two. Wait, if you were never able to have like sunlight directly touching your skin, does that mean you had no way of getting vitamin D? Like you don't get I, it when you're in the shade, right? Right. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't get any extent, you know, extensive amount of vitamin D. No, I was definitely supplementing and I wasn't supplementing well, but I was definitely supplementing because yeah, you know, 20, 20, you can get it some, a little bit in 20, 20 minutes, but not enough. Yeah. And when you were a kid, I mean, surely none of us were supplementing. People don't well, even know about that then, right? It, exactly. Or and when I was a kid, I even though it was, even though it was painful, I, you know, I was a kid, so I wanted to be out with my friends, and I wanted to be. So I didn't pay as much te- attention to it as I as I did as I, I um, when I got older. I would just I would just suffer the rash when I was a kid, <laughs> and when I was a kid, yeah. Yeah. Wow. That's actually like a really big deal. Mm-hmm. I didn't know mm-hmm. that. Yeah, that yeah. yeah, I didn't know that that could happen. So, wow. Yeah. Have you had your vitamin D levels checked? No, I haven't. Um, I thought about it. As a matter of fact, um, my doctor, I asked her about getting some labs done and she said that she could she could send me someplace, but she wasn't sure if the insurance would pay for it because, you know, whatever reason, there wasn't, there wasn't a reason that for her to order. Well, you it. have this condition that doesn't allow you to be in sunlight. Like that, that's actually, that's, that's a good point. I'm not sure if I told her about yeah, that. That's, I mean, that's not, you know, it's not just like, I wonder what my vitamin D levels are. Like that's a real thing that's for you. True. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I, I may go back to her and say, yeah, I want to get them checked because of this and see if she'll order them. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I would love to hear, um, you know, and give like a, a follow-up or something because um, I'd be very curious. And, and now that you're able to spend more time in the sunlight, I, I would wonder if you, you know, if you notice your D levels change, you know, or what, I don't know. Exactly. Well, this would have to be a baseline because I, I had never gotten them checked right. before, but yeah, yeah. It's still good, good information to, to get. Yeah. Yeah. So but, those two conditions you said improved. Mm-hmm. So that's fantastic. And anything else? What what else did you notice? Uh, let's see. Um, I lost a little bit of weight, but not not weight wise, not as much as I had hoped. But I did have the recomposition that a lot of people talk about. So I definitely um, lost inches. And uh, my body, you know, things shifted, but um, I'm still working on that, which is fine. Um, and then let's see. Oh, and my sizes, my sizes changed. So I mm-hmm. think when I started, I was, uh, yeah, when I started in January of 2020, I was an extra large and now I am a medium. So. I wow. Went- 
Yeah. Oh my Thanks. God, that's amazing. <laughs> that's a, a, a tremendous difference. Right. Thanks so much. Yeah. Um, so, and I, I don't think I've had the hiccups more than once in three years. Now, I don't know if that's carnivore, but I don't get the hiccups anymore. <laughs> Did you used to get the hiccups a lot? I mean, I, I feel like I used to get the hiccups at least a couple times a year, you know, at least two or three times a year before, before carnivore. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll take it. I'll <laughs> yeah, take it. I, I've noticed it. <laughs> So, but other than that, and the fact that, you know, I, um, I, I have food freedom now, you know, nothing really um, is, I don't crave much of anything. Every once in a while, if, you know, if I'm out and about and we're out at the, so, you know, friends and family are out at a restaurant and you see a, a nice sweet treat yeah, it, it really does look quite tasty, but overall, like if I'm just out, um, you know, on a regular day, I don't have any cravings. I don't feel like I need dessert, you know, it's just meat and I don't even eat uh, dairy anymore that much every once in a while, but mostly it's just meat, meat and um, salt and eggs once in a while. Eggs, I go on and off here and there. But. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you use the word food freedom. That sounds like recovery language. Is did you like spend time in OA or FA or I don't know one of those organizations? No, nothing like that. It's just mm -hmm. I do know that I was addicted, even though mm -hmm. I, I didn't you know go to any of those types of organizations. But I was definitely highly addicted to processed carbs and sugar. Mm -hmm. highly, yeah, um, you know, so it it's it's just it's very freeing not to have that addiction anymore so that's that's why i mean i you know i obviously come across it online that that particular phrase but it, it's it's a good it's a good phrase it really describes it it really describes it well yeah absolutely yeah so it sounds like you your um diet has sort of naturally um uh, I don't know, descended or, um, you know, converged into basically fatty meats and salt and water. Um, how did that happen? Was that something you did on purpose? Um, not necessarily. Uh, when I first started, I ate, you know, everything uh, carnivore wise. So meat, uh, um, chicken, seafood here and there, eggs, dairy, you know. And then I wondered if dairy might be keeping me, because remember I said I didn't, weight-wise, I didn't lose a lot. So I was wondering if dairy might have been the reason I wasn't losing weight as well as I had hoped. So I cut out dairy for a while, which for me, I was a cheese addict. I, I didn't have cheese on everything like I wouldn't have cheese on steak or anything like that but eggs had cheese in it burgers had cheese on them you know there was a lot of cheese in my life so that was I was so surprised when I was able to basically give up cheese but I gave up cheese and um and then I wasn't sure if eggs were causing any any issues so I decided to try with or without eggs and I didn't notice any any um, changes with or without. I just, sometimes I want them and sometimes I don't. So that's why I say I'm, I'm not having eggs now, but I may, may get a carton of eggs next week. It just depends on how I feel. Um, I had did try lion diet to see if that would kickstart the weight loss to more than it was. And I do feel good on lion diet, but I also prefer a little more variety, just, just a little more. It doesn't have to be, mm -hmm. you know, everything under the sun, but I do, I do like a little more variety. Um, so chicken, I go back and forth on chicken because I think that it gives me hot flashes. Huh. I think, I think it does. So I've 
cut out chicken for a while and then I'll bring it back in when I when I want a little variety and then I'll cut it out again when I feel like I'm flashing too much so mm -hmm. I just go in and out so um yeah I'm not I'm not completely lion diet now but I do eat beef is my mainstay and then everything else is kind of like a side mm -hmm. so would you say most days you're having beef with something else or is it less frequent than that oh no definitely if if i'm not doing uh beef only which i haven't for a while um then yes it's it's beef with something it's definitely beef with something else um mm -hmm. this this week i'm trying something so i was trying to eat a little more so i i had some uh, pork belly and I had, but I didn't like, so I had beef for breakfast and then beef for midday. And then I had pork belly and chicken wings for the, the third meal. So it's, it's not when I'm trying to eat a little more like this, I may not necessarily have beef every single meal, but if I'm just doing two meals a day, which is my kind of my norm, then mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely beef and one other item. Okay, so why are you trying to eat more? I'm gonna I'm gonna give it give it the um, what's it called feasting and fasting thing a try. So I decided to try to eat a little more this week and next week, and then um, kind of stair stairway down to the different fasting protocols and see and see if that helps. Again, still trying to get the. These, these the the last of this fat off. I keep saying weight, but it, it's just the excess fat. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm trying, you know, trying. Oh well, I want to hear more about that. So, what <laughs> is this step down uh, fasting protocol? So it's um it's just uh something that I came across on YouTube, the Steak and Butter Gang. I think it's uh something that they they do with their with their groups and probably with their individual clients. And I just decided to give it, a, give it a shot on my own to see if it was even something that I could do because I have a tendency to get all gung ho, <laughs> you know? And then I'm like, mm. so for example, uh, I'll, I'll say to them, I'll say to my father, oh yeah, I think I'm gonna fast, you know, for 72 hours this weekend. He's like, oh, that sounds good. And then I'll talk to him the next day and I'm like, oh yeah, so I had such and such for dinner. He's like, I thought you were fasting for 72 hours. I'm like, oh yeah, I, I changed my mind. So mm. I thought, well, you know what? Let me, let me see if even, even if the feasting, you know, the feasting is going to be something that I'm not used to. So I, I just figured I'd give my, give it a try myself and see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Nice. So um, I'd love to hear more about that. And actually, by the time this um, is published, uh, you will probably have finished your protocol and we, you can give me an update and I'll put it in the description so everybody oh, can okay. know. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that would yeah. be great. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So um, how is, so you were, so did you say you also are not really having butter or? Oh no, butter, butter is on the table. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Yeah, I am butter and I, I made some ghee. I don't I made some ghee in my uh, instant pot, but I don't use it a lot, probably because it's behind a bunch of other stuff in my refrigerator and I keep forgetting I have it. But butter, I definitely use butter on my burgers. I because I don't use cheese anymore. So now now butter is my my go-to. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that sounds great. Mm -hmm. So um what is your what is your family and, and friends think? So my, my friends are just like, oh, okay. You know, some of them are uh, supportive and, you know, for getting together, they're like, well, is there anything you can eat, you know, if we're going out or if, um, if we're going to, you know, one of their houses, they'll uh, try to try to have something that I can, you know, make work or they'll let me know if they're not. And then I can just make sure I either eat before I go or I fast. Um, and my father, He's uh he's definitely very supportive. Um, 
I try to get him to give up his oatmeal and his honey, but he will not. I mean, no matter how many times and how many articles I send him, he, he just, he does not want to give it up. So, and my brother. Well, he, how old is he? My dad is 70. He'll be 75 at the end of the month. And how's his health? His health is okay. Um, he, he does have diabetes, but he is trying to manage it with diet. Even though he doesn't want to go full keto or carnivore, he is still trying to manage it with diet. Um, I believe he was originally on two medications and he was able to come up one is what he told me. Hmm. So um, that I believe he should, that mean, I believe he's on just one at this point. Um, but overall his health is pretty good, you know, so, but I, I, I know it would be better if he, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. And have you told your doctors what you're doing or no, I don't even see my doctor that much. Every time I try to, I'm in a big practice, you know, thinking that I would be able to get in there if I need to. Mm. I went one day, I, uh, my, I had gotten poison ivy and I didn't know that's what it was at the time. And I mean, I was miserable. So I was like, well, you know, um, let me run over to the doctor's office, you know, when they open and maybe I could get in to see somebody, even if it was, if it was just a nurse practitioner or registered, you know, yeah. somebody. And so I was there, I think maybe one or two people were there before me. And I went up to the counter and told them while I was there. And she said, no, she said, nobody, there's nobody, nobody. And they open at 8 a.m. She's like, no, there's nobody that can see you today. You should, wow. You should, you, know, you should go to urgent care. And she told me where urgent care was. And that's what I had to do. And I'm like, why am I in this huge practice if I can't even yeah. see somebody? You know what I mean? Yeah. So well, what did they do for you? I thought all you get is calamine lotion <laughs> and maybe some Benadryl. Well, mind you, I didn't know it was poison ivy. I thought it was oh, an allergic reaction. Um, mm. So when I got to urgent care, they actually give you a steroid mm. to, help, to help with the itching. And mm. so I, I, did, I did take the steroid. Um, I can't remember. Oh, um, I don't think, was it? It might've been prednisone. It might've, mm -hmm. yeah, I think it was prednisone. Mm -hmm. So, and um so I, I did take it and it did help. It did help. Mm -hmm. pretty quickly. Yeah. Prednisone works wonders. Yeah. For inflammation. Yeah. Right. Right. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So that was, you know, um, that was pretty, pretty, that was the reason that I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to stay with my doctor because mm -hmm. I can communicate with her through the portal. So that, mm -hmm. that's a good thing, but as far as actually seeing somebody, it's mm -hmm. it's not easy. It's definitely mm -hmm. not easy. as a matter of fact, I had to go over there for something else. I don't remember what it is now, but I had to go over there for something else um, a few weeks later, and I made an appointment. I made an appointment ahead of time, and when I got over there. Oh, it was, it was later in the day. And when I got over there, the person that was supposed to see me after an hour and a half, and I was supposed to be back to, I was working from home, but I was supposed to be back online within like an hour and a half. After mm -hmm. an hour and a half, they still hadn't come out. Wow. So. Yeah. And, yeah. You need a new <laughs> doctor. Exactly. I, I'm finding that this practice is not, is not great. So yeah, I'm going to see if I can find somebody else. But um, when I was keto, I did tell my doctor that I was keto. And, you know, you get the same old, oh, be careful with that. And, you know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So it sounds like you have had just really amazing success. I'd love to hear, like, how has your eating changed from the beginning to now? And what do you think is the next evolution? Um, I'd say overall, from the in the beginning, I was probably still eating a lot of lower fat 
items, not low fat, but just lower fat. Um, I definitely didn't eat steak hardly ever when I started carnivore. Um, I was eating, I know I'm, I've never been a fan of chicken breast. I, I feel like it has a weird taste and I just don't like it. So <laughs> I've always been a thighs person. So I was eating chicken thighs, um, burgers, um, obviously bacon, love bacon. And then I would try ground beef, but I found that I, you know, just crumbled ground beef that you uh, fry up, but I found that I don't like ground beef like that very much. Mm -hmm. um, for some reason, I prefer, if, if I had bone broth, I like it in a soupy, like I like it if it's kind of soupy, but just with like butter, I tried it with butter. I just, I don't, and it's not the texture. I don't like the way it tastes, but if mm -hmm. I make it into a burger, I'm fine. I don't know why that is, but I, I did find that. Um, and then I don't like a lot of fish. I'm not a huge lover of salmon. I eat it here and there, but I don't absolutely love it. Um, so um, sardines, I had never eaten sardines before carnivore. I decided to try them and I, I do like them. I don't love, love them, but I like them enough to keep eating them. Um, same thing with smoked oysters. Hmm. Yeah, I like I like those. So I eat. I have like a whole can section, a whole can tinned section of my cabinet. <laughs> um, and try to think. Yeah. So I was eating cheese. I was eating sour cream initially. Definitely butter. Um, here and there. When I first started, I would have some yogurt and, and some berries. Um, at first, yeah, it, it was just here and there. I'd say maybe, especially in the summer when berries are in season, I would, I would do that, but I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have that, um, in the last, I'd say it's six months. I do allow it once in a while. I'm not mm -hmm. like super strict where I never have anything out of the ordinary every once in a while earlier, as a matter of fact, earlier this summer, when the berries came back in season. See, that's the thing. It's when the berries come in season, I'm like, oh, I have to, <laughs> I have, to have some berries. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's, that's what I did. But otherwise, um, and then over time, like I said, I thought that chicken, I thought that was chicken was causing me to flash. So I took out chicken for a while. And I, I'm almost positive that's what it was hmm. at, at that time. But uh, like I said, today I had some chicken wings. They're the frozen ones from Costco's. And so far I haven't, I haven't experienced any flashing. So I don't know if it was the thighs or if it was, you know, over time, it's not bothering me like it did back then. You know what I mean? Not sure. So you're talking about hot flashes as in like menopause hot flashes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So are you, are you in the midst of menopause or? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I've, I've been in menopause, I'd say two years, two, two and a half years now. So just before you started carnivore? No, right, right after. So okay. That's, that's um, the summer after I started carnivore mm. or, or the fall is pretty much when I, started menopause so then w do you have any other symptoms other than the flashes when you have chicken uh not that i'm aware of not that i've noticed mm -hmm. yeah not that i've noticed it's just so uh, that's interesting because mm -hmm. that's what they say i mean you know a healthy menopause is one without you know significant like disruption oh yeah but um but yeah, so hopefully, you know, carnivore, it helped you, you know, get set up for an easy, an easy transition. I, I think so. I really do. I mean, I know, you know, that menopause lasts for years and years, but, you know, and the flashes that I had, I don't think that they were even terrible compared to what I've heard from other mm -hmm. people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like it was just mm -hmm. like my skin was warming up. 
And I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I didn't love the feeling, but it, it, I don't think it was as bad as some people have mentioned that they've had. So mm -hmm. and when I, like I said, when I thought it was the chicken and I cut the chicken out, it definitely decreased, mm -hmm. if not stopped altogether. And um, now one thing I, I, I don't call, I don't think this is what you would call flashing. I just noticed my body temperature isn't as regulated as it used to be. So like mm -hmm. sleeping at night, one minute I'm burning up, the next minute I'm chilly. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. it. But otherwise, I, yeah. think, I think it's been going pretty well so far. <laughs> Interesting. You know, I think I had, um, like I would, I, I would have what I think of now as hot flashes, although at the time I didn't interpret it as such, but uh, you know, like I would get like super, super hot and I'd be sweating. And then like 10 minutes later, I'd be chilly again. So mm -hmm. I just always learned to wear two, two layers and I would just take off a layer. Um, and then eventually that stopped happening as much and it kind of went away. Mm -hmm. But I never had like nighttime sweats. You know, people talk about waking up drenched in sweat and there were pajamas being wet. Like none of that ever happened. Okay. So yeah, I don't know. Yeah, Interesting. I, I did have some nighttime sweats initially. I want to say with, within that first six months to a year, I do, I do. I mean, it wasn't every night, but I do remember there were some nights where I was just like, Ugh. but um, since, since then, I haven't noticed that either. So, uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Been, been good. Been good. Nice. So far. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, so would you, uh, so, um, oh, I wanted to ask, um, coffee and artificial sweeteners and herbs and spices. Where, where are you landing on those? Okay. So I've never been a coffee drinker. Uh-huh. I've, I've never drank it. My parents used to drink it when I was a kid and I hated the smell of it. So I've never drank coffee. <laughs> um, tea, I definitely was a big tea drinker. I used to love my green tea and I, I, I never drank it with sugar. I always, well, I maybe when I was first starting out, but I'd say after, you know, since I was in my mid twenties, I never drank it with uh, any type of sweetener. I just drank it plain. Um, but I also like the different flavors. You know how sometimes they have the green tea with the citrus flavors and things like that. And I gave, I to say I gave the tea up probably about eight months into carnivore. I gave up the tea. Um, Spices, I still use some spices. I make sure that the ingredients don't have, you know, anything extra. I mean, I don't know if they, if some of things hide in there, but for example, um, the Trader Joe's um, mushroom seasoning, um, umami, I think it's called umami. Mm. Yeah, I really used to love that on my burgers. That was my favorite seasoning for my burgers. Um, but I, I ran out, I'd say probably about six months ago and I just, I haven't bought it again. Um, but, but don't they make umami from, um, like some kind of fish, fermented fish. Like if you go to a Japanese store yeah. and you buy the actual umami, umami that they use, mm -hmm. it's like fermented fish, which oh, is yeah. entirely <laughs> carnivore. <laughs> right. It might be, it might be anchovies. I'm not positive, but it, mm. it make it from anchovies, but I've never come across that. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the one from Trader Joe's is mostly uh, dried mushrooms and then some other seasonings thrown in. Mm -hmm. um, but I, um, so as a matter of fact, I'm going to try smoking my second brisket ever tomorrow. Wow. <laughs> so, I've seasoned, I've seasoned the brisket and I basically threw some Redmond seasoned salt in there, some Redmond's regular salt, uh, paprika, smoked paprika, chili powder, cumin or uh, no, cayenne and some, something else in there, mm -hmm. just, you know, mixed it all up and uh, put that on the brisket and let that sit in the fridge for a couple of days. So on a regular day, I don't necessarily use a lot of seasonings, 
but I do still use them here and there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do you notice any difference? Um, I haven't really noticed anything. Um, cause I, I, I did at one point just do salt because I, I never loved pepper anyway. So I, I cut out pepper pretty much almost from the beginning. Um, but I did try just doing salt for a while. And sometimes I wonder if I, if I use too much salt, like I don't use it to where everything is too salty for my taste, but I do feel like I salt everything. But then this morning I tried um, the flank and short ribs with very little salt, like almost no salt. And yeah, I was like, why? I, why? I, I wanted to see, I wanted to see, I'm trying to see if my taste, you know what I mean? But I was like, no. Nah, well, need, the first, the, I feel like the first three, you know, three to five meals, it's hard. And then mm -hmm. after that, your, your taste gets, buds get used to it. And then you're like, oh, this is fine. Why did I think this was a problem? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that first one, you can't judge by that because it's going to suck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I've done, I've done it before too. Tried, tried not salting a steak and I didn't like it. I didn't. I was like, well, maybe my salted butter will, no, it wasn't enough. <laughs> it just wasn't enough. So I just figured this morning, I was like, well, let me try again, see if, you know, and I still prefer it with, with salt. Well, do you have some physical feeling? Like, is it a problem for you having salt or why do you feel like no, you're it's having not, salt? No, it's not a problem. It's just sometimes I, I, I just, the amount of salt I use, because you figure I'm salting my steaks, I'm salting my ribs. And remember, I'm eating um, a little more this week. So that's actually what prompted it today I was like you know I'm salting my chicken I'm salting my pork belly <laughs> so I was like well let me see if I can eat these flank and short ribs with less salt and I, I I sprinkled a little bit of the Redmond salt on it but it was very little mm -hmm. it it wasn't it wasn't enough so I just you know I wanted to see and plus you know like you said sometimes your tastes change over time so I was like well you know maybe my tastes would be okay with very little and it wasn't <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't imagine so. Um, okay, so that sounds uh, you know that sounds great, and yeah. so things are just working, and you're gonna just keep chugging along in this direction. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I'm just uh, I'm trying to find something to get this excess fat off, but because you know my. Um, my like my thighs still have quite a bit of fat on them and you know the belly area still has quite a bit of fat on them but on it for some reason I lose a pair and I'm like that's enough of that let's work on the lower half yeah well what's your uh fitness regimen like well <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah I'm, I'm pretty clear now yeah um, yeah, I've never loved exercise, um, but I used to do it quite, quite, quite a bit more than I do now. Um, I used to live in the Philadelphia area and I had a friend and we would meet up at LA Fitness every morning and, you know, get our workouts on and, you know, a lot of cardio, little weights, but a lot of cardio. Um, and so that was many years ago. And so as the years have gone by, I've done less and less. Um, I have some free weights, but I'm not consistent. I walk around the neighborhood. I actually have a treadmill, but I'm not consistent. I know that exercise is, you know, good for you. I just haven't gotten into a routine that I have stuck with yet. Mm -hmm. Well, what if you would you be willing to like get a trainer for a month to just work on weights? So no cardio and no girly pink dumbbells, but like real weights. <laughs> girly pink dumbbells. I know because yeah. you're right. I need to lift heavy. And that's the thing. So there is, uh, and I, um, planet, planet fitness, right? This mm -hmm. is the current one. Yeah. There's a planet fitness that, opened up, I'd say probably during the pandemic, that's not far from me. And I've been thinking about going over there and trying to see what it looks like, um, you know, 
I'm still a little wary of, you know, being in an enclosed space with people and everybody's touching, you know, all of that. But it, you know, that that's pretty much all there is. Then, you know, it's the only option there is. So I'm I'm definitely considering going over there and checking out and seeing, you know, if they had, like you said, if they have some trainers and if they can help me uh, get. Started. Well, if you've never done weights before, I think it might be better to just find a trainer to start you off and to kind of make sure that you have good form and, you know, give you some instruction. And then, you know, you, you can take that later, that knowledge later on to other, you know, another gym, but, um, you know, you might consider, you know, I, I don't know what your like local YMCA is like, or searching online for trainers, because, you know, and some trainers don't even work out of gyms or, or they can work with you at home, um, in your home or, you know, somewhere else or in the park. I mean, mm -hmm. there are resistance bands, there are kettlebells, there's um, body weight exercise. So there's lots of ways to do resistance training without actually having to be in the building. And I'm 100% sure, you know, that there are trainers are doing way more of that now because people don't want to go back into a gym, right? True. So, True. Yeah. That's a good point. So um, that might be, that might have to be the next step. Um, not cardio though, just the heavy weights. But, right. you know, what's nice about that is it's not a whole long, you know, thing. I mean, it can be done in 30 minutes, you know, it doesn't have to be that hard. Um, or let's see, uh, not hard. It, it, it's hard in its own way, but maybe not that unpleasant. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. So that might be the next approach rather than um, adding in more, a lot more fasting, um, add in, you know, some squats, deadlifts, <laughs> pushups. Good yeah. Point. Yeah. yeah. That's and of good. course, this is the pot calling the kettle black. Like <laughs> I, I'm supposed to be doing this myself and I have not done it. So um, yeah. Yeah. But mm -hmm. good. Have you found have you found that uh, North Carolina is more conducive to working out for you? Well, not really. Um, but I also have been on the move a lot and going places, so I haven't felt like uh, you know I've sort of gotten like a rhythm down. Um, I have definitely spent more time outside and in the sun, and that was really awesome. Um, so, but I'm here now for a while without another trip. So I think, you know, now's the time that I want to like get back into it and get a routine together. So I've been writing down what I'm going to do and now I just got to start doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But I, so I am doing a five day, uh, beef, butter, bacon, and egg challenge, um, on, uh, my new location, my new, um, network. And I am going to, um, so I, you know, it's not like we're going to focus on, um, more mindset stuff, but I think I want to use that opportunity to kind of, you know, kickstart this, uh, workout program as well. So. I will share with everybody what I'm going to be doing. And if, if those of you watching um, wish that you were a part of this five-day challenge, um, keep checking out my website, blackcarnivore.com forward slash challenge. That is where I will uh, announce any future ones. And um, yeah, and then we can go from there. Sounds great. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so where can people find you if they have questions? Um, I am on Instagram at sins underscore joy. So C-Y-N-S underscore J-O-Y. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your story. I think that, it, you know, it is so powerful and so important for people to see that this can be, a, you know, a, an incredibly healing way of eating for, um, you know, for many conditions and for every stage of life and, uh, it, you know, and that you can achieve your health goals no matter what. So that's awesome. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. I mean, I can't believe how great I feel. I'm 53 and I feel better now than I did in my late 20s, honestly. 
Yes, yes, that is what I hear often. So you heard it here, folks. You can feel better than you did in your 20s if you just start eating this way. <laughs> all right, so we, I will see you all next week and uh, have a great one. Thanks, Aiden.